Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. New tool, as you can see here, you guys have heard me harp a lot over the years on Instagram and YouTube about not spending money on tools that you don't need. Don't get caught up in buying the tools that all the cool kids have if they're just gonna collect dust and not give you an ROI. Well, I just spent two grand on this tool, bought it from Burns Tools, got the Lamello Zeta P2 along with their $400 connector kit uh, that comes in a sustainer. So I just dropped two grand on this baby, but I'm gonna do a review. I've been using it for a few weeks now. I'll tell you what I think of it, how it works, if it's worth it, and talk about some of the applications that I'm using it for. So first things first, if for those of you who are completely new to this tool, it looks a lot like a biscuit joiner, kind of acts like a biscuit joiner, but the connectors are completely different. The real reason that you would purchase this is for the different uh, capabilities that these unique connectors have. The blade operates like a biscuit joiner in that it plunges into the material. But whenever you get almost all of the way plunged in, this tool, the blade actually oscillates and, and it creates a slot in the end of your mortise. So what you end up with after you make your mortise is a slot that looks something like this. And that allows these connectors to actually slide in like so. Uh, that is the Clamex connector and here is a Tenso connector. But as you can see, it slides in um, and because it's got this unique design, it has a lot of pulling power and uh, resistance capability in that slot. And that's where these unique fasteners uh, give you a lot of interesting things that you can do. I'll show you a little bit more of how these connectors, the Clamex and the Tenso connectors work as we get into this video a little bit further. Right now, I wanna give you a close up and show you what this looks like when it's actually mortising and kind of give you the end view as I make a couple plunges. You will notice uh, this is not the stock cord that comes with this tool. Uh, it comes with a cord probably 10 foot long or so. I put a Festool plug it connector on the end of it because I'll pretty much always be using this with a vacuum hose. That way I can just plug it into my standard Festool cords and it works good that way. I'll go ahead and plop my fence down here, lock it in place. And I want you to pay attention whenever I'm gonna make a mortise uh, so that the middle of my mortise is on the edge of the board. I want you to pay attention once I get to the very end of the plunge, you'll be able to see this blade actually oscillate and pivot and create that unique groove. That happens whenever you get to the point where it plunges and this uh, little bumper here hits this red little bumper here. That is what makes the tool engage that oscillating function. So you see there that groove and how that allows these connectors to slide in like so. Here again, watch the plunge as we get all the way to the end. It happens very fast. All you hear is a click and that blade jumps in there and it creates that little, uh, I don't even know what to call it, just a very unique little channel. And last time here, watch this point as I get to the end of the mortise, you'll see that this piece bumps up against this piece here, and that is what engages that oscillating function. I will note most of us are gonna purchase this tool to use the Tenso connectors and the Clamex connectors. Um, you can use this as a standard biscuit joiner. However, the mortise is much larger than a standard biscuit. They do sell these Bisco P 
uh, biscuit type things here. Again, they're pretty thick. You can use it that way. I won't, but that's just a little tidbit FYI. One of the key differences from the Lamello Zeta and a standard biscuit joiner is most of us are used to a standard biscuit joiner fence, which is adjustable in terms of height. You can move it up and down. So if you want to offset your mortise for different thicknesses of material, you can do that. Now with the Zeta, the fence is fixed. It does pivot up and down. So if you're working with different angles such as miters on a 45 degree miter or something like that, you can adjust it for those different things. But in terms of the fence's relation to the blade height, the offset is always the same. Now, one of the nice things about that is the blade is centered at the exact same distance from the fence as it is from the base. So if you want to use your fence to make mortises, you can do it like this uh, with the fence. But if you wanted to use the base as your reference point, you can flip that up and use the base and it's going to be at the exact same position because the blade is exactly centered between the base and the fence here. So that's a useful little tidbit to know. I'll demonstrate that right here real quick just to show you in case you don't believe. I've got my line here. We'll use the fence first, lock it in place. I'm just gonna plunge halfway. <laughs> Now we want to keep the same reference point, so I'll flip the workpiece over. I'll keep it pressed down firmly. I'm going to offset this mortise uh, about an inch and a half. So now we're using the base as the reference point. Now I'm gonna get you very close up here to show you how precise this is. So we made our first plunge in this line, second plunge was about over here, but you'll notice that even when I flipped the material piece over and used the base as a reference point, the line is exactly the same. And you can see, if you look at this ply right here, this middle ply right here where it goes across, you can really see just how precise that was using the fence and using the base as a reference point. So that's a really handy, unique feature of this tool. So why did I spend $2,000 on the Lamello Zeta? I just made a video a few months ago about how I purchased a Cope Master, which is a very expensive specialty tool, thinking that it was gonna solve all my problems, ended up just collecting dust, sold it, took a big hit on it. I had a lot of fear that that was gonna be the same situation I would have if I purchased this tool. So for the last couple years, I've watched quite a few of the carpenters on Instagram that I respect the most using this for different things, but I just didn't see how it was going to fit into my workflow. I didn't think I'd use it. I didn't think it was gonna be a good investment uh, on my part to spend that kind of money on this tool. So then recently on the project that I'm currently on, it's a very modern contemporary home and they wanted a slat wall detail that I didn't know exactly how to do it uh, in any way that would execute as cleanly as I knew I could do it if I had this tool. I'd watch some other guys on Instagram do this kind of install. You'll see more on this install in future videos. Um, but let me show you real quick the application that I actually purchased the tool for. As you guys know, design trends continue to change. Things get more and more complicated working in the luxury market. One of those design trends now is to do kind of a modern slat wall detail where you take strips of wood, apply them vertically, horizontally, whatever it may be, but you need to fasten them uh, in a very precise way all the way across a wall. Now the issue I had was these slats were supposed to be stained hickory and the back panel was supposed to be painted black. So if you can imagine, you've got a big wall and you're applying a bunch of these slats like so three quarters of an inch apart, how in the world is the painter supposed to finish all this stuff? 
So it comes down to a question of execution. And what I realized was the best way to do this was going to be to apply a panel to the wall with all of these mortises, let the painter paint it black, and then I could come in with pre-finished material and just snap them right into place. That way there wasn't any need for taping things off uh, and cutting things in and stuff like that. So let me show you how this is gonna work. First thing I'm gonna do is we're gonna take these Tenso connectors right here, slide these in. I've got six of them here. I just uh, mocked this up to show you guys. And here I'll take the other side. It's different, they're not the same. There is uh, a particular way that they need to go, but you can see they're really easy to slide into place here. And then I'll show you what to do. There are these things called preload clips that make this snap into place a little bit easier. Um, kind of a unique little design here. So I'll go to my P14 side and we'll just press these into place. What that does, it kind of pre-spreads these apart and it's gonna make it snap together easier. Now use your imagination with me a little bit. Pretend this is painted black, already finished, and these are pre-stained, and I'm going to install these on the wall already, just sliding them right over, snaps right into place. Here's piece number two. Watch how easy, just snaps right in, locked in really solid not coming off. So ultimately it finally pushed me over the edge to purchase this tool because I knew it would do exactly what I needed, to, needed it to do in order to execute this detail at a really high level. Stay tuned for more on this. I'll show you this project as it continues to unfold um, and this house progresses. We're gonna get into a little bit more on how to use the different Tenso and Clamex connectors in a second, but first I wanted to answer the question of should you go with the cordless Lamello or the corded version? Um, they just came out with their new cordless Zeta P2. Now, I could have got it, but I would have had to have waited for it. It's not super readily available yet, but it's getting there. By the time this video drops, uh, it may be more readily available. This unit with the cord costs 1600 bucks. If you want to go cordless, it's gonna run you an additional 500 bucks. Now for me, I put my Festool plug it connector end on this because I figure I'm usually gonna be using it with dust collection anyways. Um, would cordless be handy? Yes, I think it would. The more I'm using this tool, I can see how I will use it on the job site for different things and I might want to be able to walk uh, away from wherever my vacuum is to that piece of material. So it might be handy. It would be really annoying having an additional battery platform and charger to have to deal with. Um, another downside was I recently did a locker unit um, slat wall project where I did 180 something mortises within about a 60 minute period of time with batteries. I'm not sure how many batteries that would have taken, but it was nice to have it plugged in for that scale of job. One thing I can't really comment on with a lot of authority, um, fe the Festool Domino, for example, you need to have dust collection hooked up to it in order for it to work properly. Otherwise, it just doesn't work. It'll, <clears throat> it'll damage your bits and stuff. Because this Zeta is a circular cutter that's uh, gonna be extracting the debris, I think you could probably get away with a dust bag with this, but I'm not sure on that. 
what I mean by that is if you're walking around within a large shop, uh, taking this to your work with a battery and dust bag, you might be able to get away with that and not have to have the vacuum hose, but I'm not sure on that. Either way, I went with the cord. I'm fairly happy with it. Certainly it might be handy to have the batteries, but for me, it's kind of a wash. Now let's talk about my favorite part of this tool, and that is the Clamex connectors. So this little biscuit apparatus here uses a cam action connector here. As you can see, as it swivels up, it's going to lock in with the opposing side, and it's going to use that cam action to pull these two pieces nice and tight together. I've been using this in the shop and in the field, and it's already really impressed me. The unique thing and the thing that you have to work around with these Clamex connectors is you need to be able to have access with the wrench in order to turn the clamping mechanism. To do that, you're gonna have to drill a hole. As you can see here, if I insert this connector uh, with a standard mortise, I have no access. So they include this jig here. It's very easy to use, it's fully adjustable. It's not complicated at all, but you're just gonna drill a six millimeter hole in each of these mortises like so, and that's gonna give you access with your wrench to turn the cam. It's a very simple jig. You've got your guide bushing up here, and then uh, you can adjust this for the different applications that you may be using. Basically all you do is you'll stick this piece here into your mortise and then drop this down, lock it in place and drill your hole. Let's go ahead and set this up. Again, I'm gonna make sure my access point um, is flipped in the correct orientation with the hole. You don't want it flipped this way, obviously. So we will go ahead Oh, I got a little plywood in there, <laughs> broke off. Go ahead and put that in there like so. Over here, slides right in. And we'll take our other connectors and these, it doesn't matter. You can flip them any which way. You just gotta slide those in. Let's flip this around here. You can see my pencil marks are lined up there. Take my wrench, lock that down, lock that down, and it is impressively strong. I can take this, I can move it around. Um, if there was glue in here right now, you'd see some nice glue squeeze out. I'm really impressed with how firmly these little connectors are able to pull things together. And of course, the other key advantage with the Clamex connectors is if you want to be able to take something apart, all you've got to do is turn it the other way and it'll pop right apart. I've already used these Clamex connectors a couple times this week for different things, um, especially joining plywood together. I had a really large plywood assembly where I had to join multiple three quarter inch thick sheets worked fantastic for that. I had one situation I needed to make a sheet of plywood 10 foot tall. So it was an awesome plywood stretcher to be able to make that joint in the Clamex connectors to pull that glue joint together and then actually have it be strong enough that I could just move it around. I didn't have to have bar clamps out or anything like that. I also use the Clamex connectors for a wainscoting assembly. So there are a lot of different uses for this. Once you get them in your brain and you've got the tool, um, there's, you just see all kinds of opportunities. Now we're on to our Tenso connectors. These have some very unique qualities. First, let me just give you a close up here and kind of show you how they work. You can see we've got our two pieces here. And if we push down, they will snap together and lock together in place. Whenever they do snap together, there is some clamping pressure where it actually continues to pull itself together because of the spring action of these. Couple things you have to consider with these. Number one, you don't have the exposed holes like you do with the Clamex connectors. 
So if you need a completely hidden fastener assembly where there's no exposed fasteners, no nails, no screws, anything like that, these are gonna be a great option. Uh, one thing, they aren't very easily removable. The Clamex connectors, obviously if you need to take something apart, you can just turn the cam counterclockwise and it's gonna come apart. These guys, you can pull them apart, but it's pretty tough. So whenever you put something together, you're gonna really want it to be pretty permanent and stay that there, stay there that way. Um, pulling it together is, a, pulling it apart is a little bit tough. The other thing I've found is I've been using these, the clamping pressure is not as strong on these as with the Clamex clamps. That cam action on the Clamex just pulls a lot tighter than these Tensos, but still for a lot of applications, this is gonna be plenty of clamping power. Uh, just a little bit ago, earlier in the video, I showed how we uh, applied these strips on here. I mean, they are locked in place really well. So, I mean, they're not gonna come off. Um, if I was doing this as a permanent assembly, I'd still probably apply some glue or adhesive to the back of these before I put them in place, but it's an awesome zero visible fastener assembly that uh, works really well. It is also worth mentioning that the price of the Tenso connectors is less than the Clamex, however, not by that much. The Tensos, if you buy them by the 300 pack, these, if you buy the preload clips also, it's gonna come to around a dollar a piece for the Tensos. The Clamex work out to about a dollar 50 a piece. So they are expensive fasteners, but in the right application, um, it can financial, financially work out. Just as an example, I'm gonna see real quick here if I can. Yeah, I can pop, pop these Tenso connectors off. So there you see, I was able to get that apart. Um, it'll come apart. It just might not be super easy to do so in a lot of situations. And then after you, uh, you pop it off, it can be popped right back together. So let's talk a little bit about applications for this tool. You guys are gonna see me using this a lot more in upcoming videos, and I wanted this to be kind of an introduction to the tool, um, but what are some of the applications where this will come in handy? I've already been using it for joinery, for joining um, basically as a board stretcher for plywood. If you need a 10 foot tall sheet of plywood, you can use the Clamex connectors to connect it. Um, and you get a connector that's gonna hold it together. You know it's not gonna break apart and it's gonna apply clamping pressure on your glue joint. Same thing um, for actual wood material. If you're making beams and you need a board stretcher, a lot of times with white oak, I can't get long boards. I can't get 16 footers, so I need to make a board stretcher. So the Clamex connectors works great for that. There are applications with miters. If you're making columns and uh, you want to be able to break something down, maybe you've got a, a column assembly that you need to put around a post uh, and you need to be able to assemble it in the shop and take it apart, you could use the Clamex. You want a zero fastener assembly, you can use the Tenso connectors. There are applications like that. Just this week, I was doing a wainscoting assembly with four quarter poplar. Um, so I was able to use the Clamex connectors for my style and rail joinery for that. It worked great and it gave me a lot of peace of mind because it was a huge assembly, knowing in my mind that it wasn't going to break apart as I was moving it uh, was a really nice thing. One of the huge ways a lot of guys use the Lamello is for breaking down cabinet parts. If you are going to have some pre-finished stain material uh, for a cabinet box and then a painted face frame, and you wanna be able to fit everything together but then send your face frame off to the painter or something like that, there are applications for that. Um, large assemblies that you need to be able to break down for transportation, take it to the job site, and then install it and then use the connectors to join everything together. Lots of applications for stuff like that where it can be a huge convenience and time saver. 
obviously the reason I purchased it for these more modern details, um, being able to snap slats onto a plywood panel quickly, effectively, and in a really crisp way to get a perfect execution, great applications for that as well. So I've only had the tool for a few weeks and I'm already loving it. Genuinely, I did not expect to, um, but I'm finding all kinds of uses for it now that I have it. So is the Lamello easy to use? I've been watching guys use this tool on Instagram for years now, and honestly, I never paid close enough attention to really learn even how it worked exactly, um, or really just study it very much. So I didn't know much about it until I purchased it and got it in my hands and started trying to use it. It did look complicated at first. And there are, I think part of the reason for that is there are so many different uses for it. And you see that in videos on the internet and stuff. But the truth is 90% of the time plus, we're gonna be using it with the same basic connector applications, just like I've been showing you with the Clamex and the Tensos, uh, butt joints, maybe some miters and stuff like that. It's really easy to figure all that stuff out. It's been easy to learn. There are a bunch of other settings on this tool that quite frankly, I haven't even messed with yet because the connectors that I'm using are all the, the P14 size. I've just basically been leaving the tool set up exactly the same all the time and it's been working great. So can it be a little complicated and intimidating? Yes, it can. Is it hard to learn? No, it's not. So let's talk about the cost associated with using this tool a little bit. I purchased this obviously for this uh, modern slat wall detail, had 180 some Tenso connectors for that, which meant I had to buy a bulk box of the Tenso connectors. For 300 Tenso connectors and the preload clips, um, it was about 300 bucks. So a dollar per fastener. This morning, I've been using the Clamex connectors so much at work that I figured I better buy a bulk box of those too. Paid 450 bucks for 300 of those. So it's $1.50 per connector. It is expensive to use. Um, so if it's not saving you time, if it's not making your life easier and um, not creating a greater higher end product that you can in turn charge more, this tool might not be worth it, especially when you also consider the cost that it's 1600 bucks for the tool, uh, another 400 bucks if you buy the assortment of connectors with it. Pretty expensive in the grand scheme of things though, not horrendous. For example, um, with the Clamex connectors, there are a lot of times doing glue joints where if I can put a connector in that applies clamping pressure to the glue joint in such a way that I can actually keep working with the material and I don't have to wait for glue to dry until I can take clamps off, that's a time saver and a money maker. So it may increase your efficiency, it may not. It may allow you to do things that you couldn't do before, which I think is what it's gonna do for me. And I also think it's just gonna simply add a level of convenience um, and ease doing certain tasks that I didn't have before. So you kinda gotta figure that out. I did wanna comment on this. I paid 400 bucks for this box of connectors. I didn't pencil it out and even see um, quantity-wise if that's a good bargain value or not. Um, it comes with the, the most popular ones, the Clamex 14s and the Tenso 14s. That's what I'm using almost all the time. It also comes with the Bisco biscuit things. I'll never use those, that was a waste of money. It also comes with the smaller Clamex Medius, which if you're gonna be using maybe some thinner material, you might need these. Odds are I will never use these. Uh, the other thing is the way the plastic insert is with this box, it doesn't use up nearly the amount of space. So if I actually just put wood dividers in this, I could probably put in twice as many connectors. Um, just keep that in mind. 
I do like, it's kind of got the diagram up here with the different things and stuff, so it's kind of handy. You get the matching red sustainer um, as your actual Zeta box, so it's easy to tell where your box is at, stuff like that. But yeah, I'm not sure if it was worth the money or not, but uh, for what it's worth, I thought I'd throw that out there. So guys, at the end of the day, the question is, is it worth the price? That's probably what you're thinking. That's what I was thinking for years and kind of wondering. Um, for me, I'm actually feeling pretty good about the purchase. I was not thinking that I was gonna feel this way about this tool. I was afraid it was gonna be another tool that sits around and collects dust that I use maybe once or twice a year. I actually think I'm gonna be using it a lot. Um, the Festool Domino I've had for several years. It's handy whenever I need it. However, I use it maybe a couple times a year, a few times a year, but I'm glad I have it when I have it, but it doesn't get used much. I actually think the Zeta is gonna get used a lot more, even in my workflow, and I'm not like a dedicated cabinet guy or anything. So it's just a matter of, is it gonna make you more money? Is it gonna make your life more convenient or the more intangible thing that's harder to actually put a number value on is, is it going to take your work into a upper echelon uh, that maybe you're not now? And that's ultimately why I purchased it. I had a task that I needed to execute at a high level. I knew that it would allow me to do that in a way that I couldn't really do with anything else. So that's why I bought it. But uh, hope this is a helpful introduction. It's been a cool tool over the last month for me to use. I bought it myself. This is not sponsored or anything like that. Um, so yeah, stay tuned. You'll see it in my videos a lot more coming up.